And welcome to Sports Highlights, our November edition right here from Old Dominion. Glad you're with us. Our program airs on Mondays at 7, 2, and 7, weekends at 9 a.m. as we have sports highlights on the road, sometimes in the studio, sometimes on the road. Our entire crew out here with us. Delicia, Milton Jones, glad you're here. Thank you. Third year, mm -hmm. hard to believe. I know, third year is here. I took the job during the pandemic and now we have a sense of normalcy that is about us and I'm enjoying every moment of it. And basketball for you started in Georgia. Talk yes. about the roots there. Wow, my roots definitely run deep in the coastal area of rural Riceboro, Georgia. Uh, that's where I was born and raised and I played the, the game against my uncles and my cousins. And uh, they kicked my butt many a days. I took my ball, went home crying many a days. Right. But that rearing has allowed me to have some experiences that are second to none. Delisha also made the WNBA yes. Hall of Fame. Yes. She also played in the Olympics too as well. Correct, yes. So I played 17 years in the WNBA and was able to win two championships with the Los Angeles Sparks. Then um, I have two Olympic gold medals with USA Basketball uh, representing our country in the 2000 and the 2008 Olympics. I made the team in 2004 when they went to Greece, but I tore my ACL about a month or so before competition. So I would have three medals, but two is still good. And that probably made you, that's my mom's country, Greece by the uh -huh. way, probably you probably started thinking your post career after that probably because that made you, you had some idle time. Yeah, most definitely. I think for athletes when you have an injury it really makes your world stop and then you have to really calculate what's next and you can almost go into this dark space where while you're trying to figure things out it's scary but when you tighten up your bootstraps and you realize that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, you kind of reposition your goals and then you go ahead full speed. She's all inclusive basketball, but I got to ask you this SEC question. Okay. You went to Florida. You yes. played against Pat Summit in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. We also played against Andy Landers at Georgia. <laughs> now, he saw you more than anybody. Oh, my goodness. How difficult, <laughs> because you were recruited by Georgia, yes. how difficult was it for you to say no to your home state? <laughs> okay, do you know Andy Landers? <laughs> because <laughs> if, if he were here to give this interview with us, he would probably have some choice words for me. So it was tough. Uh, everyone in the community was always telling me to go to Georgia. Our mayor was telling me to go to South Carolina because he was a game cop. There were so many different people trying to influence the decision. But the University of Florida came to the table and they made the most reasonable offer. My sister was playing at Stetson in D-Land, Florida, and um, her coach ended up leaving. And Florida said, well, your sister plays D1 basketball. We'll give both of you a full scholarship. Now you're a single parent mother can come and see both her daughters play on the same team and it makes life easy for her. And so that's why I chose Florida. Mm -hmm. If I had went to Georgia, I'll be honest, we probably would have won about two or three national championships because if you leave it to Andy Landers to tell you, I was the missing piece, you yeah. know, to that puzzle that he had built. You were probably the missing piece in Tennessee too. We had <laughs> one young lady from here, Lakeisha Fred. That's right. That uh, went to Georgia. That's right. So the SEC has always had good roots in basketball. Most definitely. The SEC, wow, it's the powerhouse. It is women's basketball when you think about it. I know UConn came along and they became a household name and put the women's game on the map in their own way. But when you think of the SEC play, there's just so much talent that come from those rural areas where you can go and pluck away a, a nice post player with long, a seven foot wingspan and can run the floor like a deer, or these just tough, grimy, gritty guards that are physical and savvy with the game. You can find a plethora of talent uh, in the rural areas of the South that make the Southeastern Conference as powerful as it is. Talking to Coach Milton Jones, and you talk, that's a good point about the grinding, mm -hmm. that a lot of times you watch the men or the NBA, it's always inside the paint grinding yeah. or the outside three. Mm -hmm. How about the women's game? It's a little bit more different. Even the late John Wooden always liked the fundamentals and how the girls work the ball around each other. Yes, now this is the thing that I love uh, talking about. So my first coaching job was coaching men. I coached the, uh, my husband's team actually, the LA Stars, they were in the ABA and we were in California. And I love that experience being able to coach men. They have this pure athleticism that just oozes from within. But there comes a point where you need fundamentals. You need to be able to execute and understand that you are working in conjunction with four other people on the court to make one thing happen with the basketball. That's where you go to the women's game and you can see the beauty in that artistry that we put on display where you can see a play from start to finish 
and see the intricacies within it and how it develops into something beautiful, which is the ball going through the basket uncontested. Guys, they can rely on athleticism and they can shoot a, a fadeaway jump shot and hang in the air for three seconds with a hand in their face and, and still make it. That's beauty in that artistry too. But man, you can really play the women's game regardless of your skill set, regardless of your abilities, and you can still be successful. Right, you see a lot of the set shots back in the day. Yes. You know, why not? That's right. Something for everyone, talking to Coach Milton Jones here at Old Dominion. This is where they play at. This is her third year as the basketball coach. And you talk about, it's not just what you teach on the floor, it's what the girls do when they're away from you. Yes. There's outside influences, yes. there's social media. 20, 25 years ago, that did not exist. There's negative, toxic people out there. Yeah. So there's a lot more coaching you have oh, to do. You definitely do. I consider myself a human being first, and I look at them as human beings as well. And when you're 18 to 22 years old, you're really trying to figure some stuff out, whether it's about you or whether it's about the world in general. So I use basketball and my ability to coach as my ministry, as me being able to be a life coach for them outside of a basketball coach. So many of the things that we speak about in this art it does imitate life so the adverse situations that you're in with basketball and how they choose to handle it depress the emotion increase their intellect and think their way through things rather than reacting their way through things it can serve them in that same capacity in life so a lot of the times you will see me stop practice and I will use basketball as an opportunity to conjure up strength within them or wisen them up intellectually to be able to handle those same things and situations when they occur in life. Yeah, talk about some of the different places that have helped you get those life lessons. You mentioned Greece, mm -hmm. you played Russia. Yes. Talk about some of the different places that molded you, Georgia, Florida. So for me and my career and a lot of other WNBA players, in order to supplement our income because the pay wasn't that extra extravagant in the WNBA. I believe when I first came into the league, I was making $50,000. But you, you couldn't tell me I wasn't the richest person in the world. I was very happy for that because of the opportunity. But to supplement the income, we had to go overseas and play. 17 years in the WNBA, 16 of those consecutively were playing year-round in Europe from Italy to Spain to Russia to Czech Republic to um, South Korea you name it I've been there um, ten times over so those moments in those countries where I'm the only person in that town that has my color of skin or while I was in Turkey I probably was the only Christian you know when that was a Muslim country so when you're in those types of environments it really allows you to take a good hard look at who you are and see the differences between you and the environment that you're in and you can understand the beauty of that and the beauty of you and then it also makes you grow you mature in a special way so now those lessons allow me to come back and give impart that wisdom on my players. Right, but you have to be a survivor there. There's you no do. second chance. I mean, you and your husband had to like living here first yes. to move here to get the job. Yes. So y'all two are at peace. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it transitions to the players. Yes. Because when the top coach is happy, it does, it does uh, you know, evolve. That's right. It all starts from the top. Yeah. If, if um, my life is disorganized yeah. and chaotic, then it's, I'm only going to be that type of example for my players. Right. So usually when someone is hiring, they want an individual that has had great experience in life and in different areas where they can come and they can be, be able to have the right posture in this environment, not only for the organization and the school, but also for these young, thriving individuals that are trying to adult. You know, they're not adults yet, but they're adulting. You know, they're giving their best effort towards it. And folks, she's quite a role model too. She's mm -hmm. in the Hall of Fame. How was that experience? How was the phone call? And was there a nice dinner? Tell us about it. So the phone call happened. Carolyn Peck, who actually is the first African-American oh, yeah. woman to win a national championship with Purdue. She was the one that gave me the call and when I heard her voice on the end of the phone and she told me what she was calling about waterworks, <laughs> instant tears and my husband sitting beside me looking at me like, are you serious? Is this really happening? I couldn't even talk to him because I'm trying to listen to her while I'm wiping tears. It was just a mess, but it was a, a, a beautiful mess. Were you here or at home? I was here. Okay. I was here um, in Norfolk at yeah. my home in downtown right. uh, Norfolk where we stay and I received that call. It was late in the evening. Yeah. 
I love Carolyn's uh, accent. Oh, oh yeah. That, at least that soothed you a little bit. Yes. Her, she's got such a nice, soft accent. Yes, hers is a little bit more heavier than mine. Exactly. But and, uh, me and Coach are born the same day. That's right, 9-11. Yes. We're both 9-11, and yeah. both Virgos, we like to get things done. That's right. If we see the light bulb change, we yeah, got yeah, to fix it. We're about solutions. Uh, exactly. <laughs> All right, let's get to the serious side. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Russia. Yes. Um, course the war in Ukraine mm -hmm. and you talk about Brittany Griner who mm -hmm. played college basketball a couple things here have evolved yeah. since then yeah not only and we're not going to be negative towards anybody correct but she's in a very adverse situation mm -hmm. right or wrong regardless she should be out yeah that's my opinion yes the second thing was I was shocked mm -hmm. coach that her former coach basically ignored her when she was asked about it yeah so it really you know it stings mm -hmm. it really does sting and it's a huge slap in the face because Brittany is an individual that helped Kim Mulkey become Kim Mulkey you know had it not been for Brittany Griner and her efforts on the court would Kim Mulkey really have the name and a lot of the accolades that she has received uh, from Britney's point up until now? Because her Britney's legacy wasn't just in those years that she spent with Kim. Because Britney's legacy allowed Kim to have a platform, which allowed Kim to be able to recruit and then recruit beyond Britney. So for her to stand silent on this, well, I don't know what personal issues you may have or even political. Look at the human side of it. That is someone that gave their blood, sweat, and tears for her. So she should be able to open her mouth and speak on that issue or give a reason as to why not. You know, because Brittany, yes, mistakes are made. I don't feel like the punishment fits the crime. It does not. And President Biden does need to step up to the mic and put that on the top of his to-do list to get Brittany back home. Yeah, especially because he's not running for office this year either. Correct. And they've been asking about him. Uh, her wife asked about it. Mm -hmm. Everybody's asked about it. Petitions. Mm -hmm. The WNBA, as the season evolved last year, they yes. were talking about it. But um, what's the whole point? You're the head coach. You're trying to teach these girls. That's what Mulkey was doing with Brittany. And you're going to turn your back on a player. You know, it's one thing about being dropped on Facebook and LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Who cares? Mm -hmm. This is life. This is life. It is. But here's, here's another point. Brittany represented this country. Won gold medals for this country. Now, everything that she did for this country, what is the country doing in return for her? That's like a soldier going to war. And then when your vets come back home, you just forget about them. We see that on the streets every day, too. So it almost shows the dark side of our country from time to time with how we can forget those that don't, that don't need to be forgotten. And I just hope that this is a situation that can become rectified with President Biden doing what is necessary to be able to bring her home. Yeah, but it's becoming political now, too. It really is. Yeah. It's been political from the start, right. obviously, because, as I said, the punishment does not fit the crime. Yeah, the she timing's bad be. because of the war. Exactly. That, but now it's time to step up. Yes. Uh, talk about the season. Okay. Uh, you got some good a non-conference schedule. Talk about uh, November, December. And how's yeah. So, yes, we have a good non-conference schedule. We're going to open up with Florida Gulf Coast. Uh, they're a team that is perennially in the top 25. So we wanted to put ourselves against some very good competition to really see from the very beginning where we are. If we are to win that game, then great, we will build off of that. If we are to lose that game, then you best believe I'm going to use it as motivation to carry us through. Then we'll go to Texas um, State and we'll play them. And um, then we'll um, have a Thanksgiving tournament where we'll see the likes of Mississippi State and some other um, schools that are on that the list. Well. Uh, yeah, I know that school <laughs> all too well. They have a new coach down there. Yeah. So I know they're trying to regroup uh, as well as a lot of other teams. But we, we have a few Power 5 schedules. Uh, team scheduled this year and we want to see if we can make good on what we did last year against Auburn and against Texas Tech being able to get good healthy wins against teams like and that. It's great that you're in a brand new conference the Sun Belt. You yes. Know, Old Dominion a long time ago was in the Sun Belt. You probably uh -huh. might have heard. Yeah, back but, in the day. Uh, you know, you've evolved from Conference USA. Yes, yes, we have, and we're excited about the move to the Sun Belt. Um, it's uncharted territory for us, but as you can see with how things are playing out with football, whew, 
very strong conference when it comes to football. Talk about the mental health is so important mm -hmm. these days. What do you tell the girls? The road trips are not easy. Some yeah. people get you know people get homesick sometimes. Yeah. I know that sounds basic, but it needs it's to true. be talked about. It's true. Uh, budgeting their time, their yeah. classes, their meals, their friends, and so forth. Because the road, you've been on the road forever, mm. overseas, yes. away, when there was nobody watching, yes. no family. Uh, WNBA, it's not easy for some people to be on the road. It really isn't, and it's something that you really have to be very aware of self because if you're not aware of self, then circumstances can have you in a dark place. And then before you know it, you're battling depression. Right. Or you've secluded yourself and isolated yourself to a point to where you almost turned into a recluse. And you're realizing that you're not having the human interaction and things are just different. So with my players, we really take a lot of pride in paying attention to the mental health of them. Yeah. Making sure that the coaching staff as a whole and individually make sure we meet with players. Not in a basketball setting or even to talk about basketball. Sometimes it's just to understand what their interests are in life and to just uh, tap into that. Those conversations can be healthy and it can be fulfilling. Um, we want to try different ways to empower them. We have psychiatrists, sports psychologists, whatever we need resource-wise to help them get through anything, it's available. Because, right, these are you know, young adults yes. and of course we all have our moments and yes. of course uh, we've all been in work jobs and teams and we haven't always gotten along with each other mm -hmm. but it's almost important and paramount they have to while they're playing and also off the court and yeah. I'm sure you emphasize that. Yes we do and, and one thing that I do for our women is they're young women trying to figure out their way in this life and we know for women we're still fighting for our our position and, and to be heard so I make sure that they understand the power of being able to use their voice don't silence yourself because that's the worst thing that you can do that's self-sabotage so you have to be able to speak speak on things whether it's something you feel good about or speak on things even if it's confrontational but something good can come out of it if it's handled in a healthy way right empty out the negative yes you know you got to because it's all all around you the yes. more positive you can be the better the because, better. because the season's a grind yes it right? is I mean, yes it starts from the jump in November and you want to keep going. Yes. And you had a great year last year. Yeah, we did. We won 24 games last year. We made it to the WNIT, lost in the second round. Uh, we really thought that we had the type of team that could win conference and go dancing. Yeah. Uh, but as you say, you got to flush out the negative. You, in life, you can't get too high over successes and you can't get too low over defeats. What we want to do is learn how to allow um, our moments of defeat not to define us, but to fuel us in order to enhance and get better and optimize what's in front of us. Yeah, because there's always going to be negative people and naysayers. You want yes. to surround yourself around positive people. I think it's important, especially for some of these girls are still teenagers. They are. You know? They are, and, and it's good for them to have people with healthy mindsets yeah. and, he and a healthy appetite for optimism right. surrounding them. Some of the key players you're counting on. Some of the key players we're counting on, Amari Young, obviously she's a fifth year senior for us. She's been here for four years, going on five now at ODU. We want the community to come out and really support her. Uberly athletic, she was a Gatorade player of the year in high school with Zion Williamson. Um, then you have um, Michaela Dickens, she went to Princess Anne, local product. Uh, She's a transfer from Boston College. This is her fifth year. She's back in the 757. We want the community to come out and support her. She's a sniper from beyond the three-point line, but just a savvy veteran player on the court. Then you have Ty, uh, Jatija Jones. You know, she's a fifth-year senior as well, and she's a transfer from Memphis. Mm -hmm. um, when you have individuals like this that are, that are filling the spots on our team, they're beautiful people and individuals, mm -hmm. but then they happen to be pretty good damn basketball players. Yes. Well, great talking to you and all the best to you. And thank you for your time and your talent and your treasure. Mm -hmm. All the best to you and your husband both and your, your coaching staff being on the road. Thank you, sir. Always. My pleasure. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Alicia Milton-Jones right here in her third year as a women's basketball coach for the Monarchs. Proud Florida right there. A student <laughs> as well. She mm -hmm. played for Florida in the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. WNBA. She's mm -hmm. done it all. And she can help these young girls out. Mm -hmm. Sports highlights will continue after this.
You're watching NNPS TV. Catch sports highlights on Mondays at 7, 2, and 7, and on Saturdays and Sundays at 9 a.m. Visit us online at nnpstv.com to view all your favorite episodes. NNPS TV, watching education happen. All right, welcome to our second part of sports highlights on the road from Old Dominion. Hope you enjoy that first interview with the head coach of the women's basketball team. Very fascinating interview right here along with Ray Price. And also want to thank Pierce Yarberry as well, the assistant SID. Here are the Mari Young. Good to see you. Fifth year. Yes, sir. And time has flown by, hasn't it? It really has. <laughs> you got that extra year because of COVID, correct? Yes, sir. Um, you're a forward. How has it been uh, the prior teams? Of course, last year y'all did make the WNIT. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, prior team, prior team, you know, we've always had a pretty good team ever, ever since I've been here. Um, my sophomore year, if COVID wouldn't have happened, we probably would have won the tournament. But every year I've been here, we've been progressing and getting better. Um, this year, we're making the right strides, and I think we're going to do good this season. You're playing for a very dynamic, energetic coach, and Coach Jones, talk about her. <laughs> she's just really funny. I always tell her she reminds me of like an, an aunt. Yeah. Or, you know, she's just, you know, great energy, always making jokes and stuff like that. Um, she's very passionate about the game and she really cares for us and you know she wants to see us do well on and off the court. You can really answer this question really well. How have you balanced academics and athletics because going to school and having that discipline for five years has not been always easy. Right. Um, initially coming in I've always you know took my academics seriously but initially coming in trying to balance work life and ba work and basketball and just having still having time for a social social activities and stuff. It was hard coming in initially, but um, I think prioritizing school, you know, coming here knowing that I'm here to get a degree and still to play basketball, that's helped. And also um, our academic staff, they do a good job of keeping us on top of things, going to study hall each week and really just trying to get my work done as soon as possible so I can have time, you know, for leisure time. Right. Have you tried to help some of the younger girls with uh, preparing for the schedule as well as the road? Yes, sir. Um, you know, Snacks, one of the freshmen, she will call and ask me, you know, things, talking about, you know, how's this going to be, how's that going to be and stuff. Um, you know, because we really have a new team, so they're always asking me questions. So, I mean, anytime I can give them advice and help them, you know, that I've been here a while, I, I do so. She sure has. Uh, Mara Young, she's <laughs> in her fifth year at Old Dominion. She's seen it all right here. How do you like playing on this floor? I love playing on this floor. I love the energy. Um, the fans come. We have really loyal fans here at ODU. Um, people that have been to the game since seeing me since my freshman year. Um, the energy is ecstatic. I just love playing here, being on the home court. Right. This is really a cozy environment here. And on the road, it's not always as fun. Right. <laughs> but still, you got to bring the, the joy to the road games, too. Right, right. Talk about some of the positions when you were in high school. You didn't always play forward, right? You played different positions since you were a young lady. Um, <laughs> mostly, you know, I was, I tell my teammates, I tell them like one time I tried to play a uh, point guard one time in like seventh grade. So I commend anybody who, you know, is a point guard. I always tell them I wouldn't want to have that headache. Um, I probably did that for a few months, but mostly in high school when I really started growing, I probably had a growth spurt like eighth grade. And after that, I shot up. So about then I, they moved me to the forward and I just been working on my, you know, post game and stuff like that. But also I've played the small forward, the three position too. So just trying to have guard skills and also bang down there in the post with the bigs has helped me be able to, you know, work both positions. We're talking to Mari Young. She is from South Carolina. Yes, and of sir. course she's in her fifth year with the Lady Monarchs. We've got a great tradition. A lot of Hall of Famers here, and of course, uh, they've gone from Conference USA to Sun Belt. Of course, this is going to be something new for you as well. It is. It is. Um, I'm excited. Um, I have a few friends. I had a friend at Georgia Southern, a friend at Georgia State that plays in the Sun Belt. So I watched, you know, a few games when my friend at Georgia Southern was playing. I'm just excited to enter a new era. You know, you know, leaving Conference USA. Right. Going to miss them, but I'm excited. What do you like to do off the court to unwind a little bit? You mentioned you do like to make brownies. <laughs> <laughs> I love brownies. I love brownie sundaes. Um, sometimes I just like to cook. I like to watch movies with my teammates. I like to go shop and go to the mall. I like to watch the sunset at Whitehurst Beach. I like to go to the beach. 
Um, at, back at home, I really like to go to the lake. I like to go tube and stuff like that. What lake are you talking about? Clark Hill. Oh, there you go. <laughs> was, uh, we got Virginia Beach here, but lakes are really nice as well, too. How important is that bonding with your teammates before the season starts? You mentioned one of the freshmen calls you, but that bonding really mm -hmm. is important because it's important to be civil with each other. Right. Um, having a relationship off the court is really important um, with your teammates because if you know how your teammates are off the court, um, you can, it's easier, that translates on the court, you know how to communicate with each, er, which, with each other. Because everyone's not the same, you know, some of, us have, some of us have different triggers and stuff, some of us don't like to be taught to certain ways. So you just know, you know, you can know what you can say to her and what you can't say to her, and it just really, you know, balances it all. Yeah, because once the game starts, you're talking 40 minutes of, uh, of a grind. Now right. let me ask you, you've seen it all, you've seen 20 minute halves, you've seen 10 minute quarters. In high school, you played eight minute quarters. Do you like the quarter system? I like the quarter system. Like I it. like the quarter system. Um, I think like AU we would play like halves, and I'm, mm -hmm. you know, you can call the timeout every so often. But I like having that little, you know, break in the quarter. You can come together and put ideas together, and you know, rejuvenate. So I like quarters. Yeah, because it's kind of a motivation. Yeah, you got ten minutes, mm -hmm. but you still got three quarters left. Right, right, right. What uh, as far as uh, the basketball? Do you play a lot on your own? Do you like to shoot a lot? Do you? How do you do you one on one? Do you get like a three on three pickup game? How do you girls? get away from the court and play? Um, away from the court and play, the coaches are here really at our disposal. They will come in and they stay after practice for a while. You just call them up and they're here to help. They stay six, seven, eight, nine o'clock. They're here to help us. Um, so we come in and do individual workouts, call up a coach and they'll help us. Sometimes I like to, I'll do that or I'll stay after practice and work out with the coach or I'll just come in later at night. Do you have goals to continue playing basketball after this year? And uh, what are your business plans down the road? Um, split on if I want to play after, yeah. you know, I'm not sure if I want to play after or not, but um, ultimately I like to be an occupational therapist. Mm -hmm. So you thought about life after basketball? Yes, yeah, definitely so. Very definitely good. So. Well, all the best to you and all the best to your team. Uh, I know you're excited about the schedule as well. I am. Very I am. good. Amara Young right there in her fifth year at Old Dominion, of course, and uh, she had an extra year because of the COVID year. and. A She's a good role model to the other younger girls and the upperclassmen as well. And she's a shining star right here on this court. So I want to thank our great guest today, Coach uh, Milton Jones, as well as Amara Young. And thanks to our great crew right here for Sports Highlights on the Road, our Thanksgiving special. I'm Greg Picamaris. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching all of our sporting events, too, on our YouTube crew. And we'll talk to you soon.